I'm going to walk through the steps to tune up an old Stanley hand plane. I bought this at a local swap meet. I, I don't typically buy these anymore, but I got a particularly good deal on this. It, it's a Type 11. I could tell that right away because of the three patent dates and the small knob. And while I was there, I, you know, I took a quick look at it, pulled off the uh, lever cap and the blade assembly. Uh, it looked pretty clean, you know, not too much rust. Uh, the the Japaning or the you know black paint looks pretty good. Handles cracked, you know, but that's not that big a deal. The knob looks fine. The uh, blade, you know, it's dirty, but it looked pretty good. I did not take the uh, the chip breaker off, but based on what I saw, it looked it looked okay. There's of course a lot of people out there that show how to do this. I, I do at least one or two things different or additional that I haven't seen on any other videos. And I learned how to do this from uh, Alan Boardman, who taught a class years ago at the cutting edge in uh, Los Angeles. So I'll walk through the steps that uh, I learned at that time. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is take it all apart. I'll use whatever necessary to, to clean this all up. Typically, you know, paint thinner if there's something that's particularly oily. One thing I, I do like to look at is how well or how much this is worn. You know, as, as the adjusting nut goes back and forth here, it tends to mushroom out this material. And this one doesn't look too bad. So I've seen some of these where they're really, this, this brass is really pushed out from from that being too tight, but this one looks okay. So you can see here another another way to tell this is a, a type 11 or 12 or in that era is this back surface of the chip breaker is black. There is only a, f a fairly short amount of time that that uh, happened. And you can see here the blade actually looks pretty clean. I think that'll clean up okay. Note two, uh, so you'll often see this on older planes where it looks like somebody's tapped on here. And I, I think it seems odd, but I think that's from people, you know, thinking this is like a wood plane and they're tapping on the blade to change the adjustment. So I'll go ahead and clean this up and uh, we'll take another look at it. I've gone through the preliminary cleaning of the parts and deburring, things like that. So next, I'm going to uh, take a look at each part and I'm going to use a, a Sandflex block. These are made by Klingspor and it's a, it's a rubber with uh, silicone carbide, I think, embedded in it. So it really does a nice job of, of removing rust. I like to have the plane uh, where it has you know, still looks old. I, I don't want this thing to look like new. So I'm just going to use this, it's kind of like a rust eraser, to clean this up and, and maybe even out pieces like this where it's dark and light and things like that. Um, the, uh, the bolts here, I'll clean up the bolt heads a bit. Uh, the, the blade and chip breaker a little bit more. That'll just get them looking a little bit better. So I've got all the hardware and, and the all metal parts all ready to go. They're cleaned up. I've deburred some of the thing. You know, some of these edges are real sharp, so I took a file and knocked it down. The uh, nuts and bolts have been deburred and cleaned up. And so all that I think I'm happy with. Looking at the uh, chip breaker, can see it's it's got an obvious bend in it so I'm going to fix that I want this this part should be pretty much straight and then you know that curves down to uh, to hit 
the back of the blade. The blade looks pretty good. The back is pretty clean. You know, you're not going to see that anyway. Uh, the back end of this has a couple of bends in it. It kind of does a wobble there. So I'm going to um, go ahead and straighten those parts out as best I can. You know, one, one thing to keep in mind on the blade is, you know, this end is hardened. And you can usually tell it's, I'm not sure if that's going to show up, but there is a slight color change, right? Basically right at the bottom of the hole here. So it's hardened from there down. So I would not, if it was bent down here, which I, pretty rare, uh, you would probably break the blade trying to straighten it. Because some of these bends are so localized, it might be easier to use the anvil. Yeah, that, that definitely helped. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, that looks that looks pretty straight. The chip breaker needs to sit tight against the back of the blade. If if it doesn't fit tightly there, then uh, as the plane's making a cut, obviously the the shavings can get stuck under there. So couple things have to happen here. One, it needs to be flat, but two, it can't, at the front edge, it can't be uh, up a little bit. So, you know, because you could, you could theoretically look at this and, and the way you look is, is just holding this up and siding out this way. Uh, it could look like there's no gap, but you could have the front edge of this up at a little bit of an angle. So we need to make sure both of those uh, things are uh, situated correctly. So in order to do that, the, the back of the blade needs to be nice and flat. So I've gone ahead and uh, sharpened it. And I, I've got a couple of videos on that if you're interested. So I think you can see here that's nice and flat and shiny. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And as I, uh, if I put this on here on the back and I sight out here, it looks pretty flat. It's, but it's, it's, it's almost a little wavy. I can see a gap and then no gap and a gap and no gap. I see people, assuming this is a stone, uh, just coming in here and, and flattening this like this. And I, I don't like to do it like that because if you get it flat in that situation or that configuration and then you you know tighten the chip breaker up it's going to bend a little bit because you know there's typically a gap between the blade and the chip breaker and when you tighten this up and of course that's not going very far so it's not that big a deal but once again it depends on the configuration but when you do that if if i had flatten this like this and now put it on the blade and then tighten this, it could open that up. So I like to ensure this has actually like a little bit of a back bevel on it. The way I do that is I set up my stone in case I'm just, in this case, I'm going to use a diamond plate so that it's about three quarters of an inch above a reference surface. So I'm going to take my chip breaker and set it like that. And now as I work this edge, and if I look there, it's uh, I'm trying to figure out, it looks like it's hitting a little bit far back from the edge. Now this chip breaker off this type 11, type 12, and, and in that range is a little different than most chip breakers, particularly later ones. I'll, I'll show a picture here that, that shows the difference. This one's actually a little easier to tune up, uh, but I want to make sure I'm not putting too big a back bevel on here. So I'm going to look. 
Yeah, that's a little back from the edge. I'm going to lower this a little bit more. I, I don't need that much of a, a back bevel on it. Okay, I've lowered this so it's it's about five eighths from the surface now, and that that seems to be working a little better. Now I, I should point out it's it's easy to do this where you end up creating a little bit of a belly on this. So you really want to be careful. I have had to, in some situations, actually come to the end to uh, to get rid of that that little belly, I'll we'll call it here. But I'll go until it's nice and flat. It sits, sits nicely on the back of the blade there. Okay, that is looking really good now. Now, keep in mind, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you see a very slight, slight gap, you know, realize when this gets in the plane, it's going to be held down tight by the screw, and then the uh, the lever cap is going to be pushing on there too. But when I look at that, I don't see any gap at all. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to clean up this front edge. Uh, if you can see that there, I mean, it looks pretty good, but but you know that's where the shavings are. Uh, ejected you know out of the mouth of the plane i'll typically start with a diamond uh, and then go up to maybe a, you know a thousand grit now i like to look and see that I'm, I'm getting all the way up to the edge there which i am so yeah you might have to tweak your angle here to make that happen okay chip breaker's done i went up to a thousand grit I did have to go um, back to the stone uh, just because, you know, this metal is pretty soft, so it goes quickly, but it does create a, a burr as you're doing that. So back and forth a couple times, you can see that looks pretty good. So I've done with the chip breaker. Uh, I only did the back of the blade so far, so I, just because I don't want to be messing with a really sharp blade until the very end. I'm going to work on the frog next. Now, there's two things I want to do to the frog. One, I want to get the surface on which the blade sits nice and flat, you know, in particular down towards the, uh, the edge of the blade. And the other thing is I want to make sure it sits flat in the body of the plane. Now, these older planes, they didn't really do a great job machining these these surfaces down here i mean they're at a glance they look okay but you know it's it's the machining's pretty rough um, sometimes there's high spots uh, you can usually tell i'm not sure if it shows up in the video but this this frog is hitting mostly here there's a couple spots here maybe there you know it's just not a really well machined surface the the frog itself, those are usually pretty good, but you know, quite often they've been dropped at some point. Yeah, this one looks like it's got a little bit of a a burr there where where the corner hit on something. So uh, I'm going to clean those up and get those to fit a little more nicely. I, you know, with a with a bedrock plane, you know, you've got these huge flat surfaces, and you're you know, there's not much distortion, but with this style of plane, essentially, you know, three surfaces, the back one and the two front, when you put these screws in, it puts a lot of pressure on some of these areas. And, uh, you, you know, sometimes you'll notice there's a crack on either side here, you know, from this pushing down. So we don't want one side pushing harder than another and exacerbating that issue. So First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a fine file and, and get rid of any high spots. And then I'm going to lap these two pieces together. So I've got this loosely clamped in my vise here. You, you know, be careful when you're clamping this stuff. This, this old uh, cast iron is kind of brittle. So I'm just going to make sure I'm holding that on there flat. And just take... Small strokes, yeah, and then yeah, I can tell it's, it's not hitting flat all the way across. Now, it's interesting. I turned the file over, 
and it's actually hitting a little differently. So maybe that file's not perfectly flat. Okay, that looks much better. And then my handle. Notice when I'm filing, I'm only pushing over the part. I don't want to be able to push off to one side or the other and get something out of flat. That's difficult to do with this. Obviously, I can't get in there. They used, a, I'm sure, a milling machine to come in and do that. Okay, I've got this just you know lightly clamped down here. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on each of these surfaces. I've got some uh, 90 grit lapping compound here. I'm going to kind of lightly sprinkle that on there. <laughs> Make sure you put some paper down or something. You don't want that getting into your bench. Okay, so. Ooh, doesn't that sound good? All right, so I'm going to do this. This this one doesn't seem too bad. I've seen some of them. Maybe I don't know a third of of these. The frog actually rocks a little bit before you start, and in some cases I've filed a little bit more to try and fix the rock. Um, this one sits pretty flat, so I think it just the lapping in itself is going to make this seat nicely. So I'm going to do this. I'll, I'll take it out once in a while and wipe that and s see if I'm getting you know most of the surface lapped, and uh, then I'll show you when I'm done. Here. Okay, that's that's all done. So I've got it all cleaned up. And that boy, that just feels nice now. And I move it. You know, before when the you know the rough machining from before it just didn't feel right, but now. That sits nice and tight and uh, get a sense of it there. It looks great. Okay, next up, I'm going to uh, get the surface of the frog flat. I've got some 100 grit sandpaper stuck to my uh, surface plate here, and I could use a joiner, tabletop, or, or something else that's, that's good and flat. Uh, so I'm going to get this flat. Like I said, I'm primarily concerned with this area. You can see with this particular frog, they never even hit back up in here. So I assume that's a touch on the low side. Uh, one thing nice about this one, when I when I put the uh, Y adjusting lever down, it's totally below the surface. That That's not always the case. Some, sometimes it'll stick up a little bit. And if it does, I'll, I'll flip it all the way back so it's as far back out of the way as possible and work it that way. But I don't know. It seems about 50-50 whether or not that's the case. I'm going to just you know, rub this on here until this is flat. You know, And like I said, mostly down uh, where it really counts down there. Now I do want to turn it sideways once in a while. To once again, you know, work around the uh, the washer here and, and get back up into this area. So I'll continue to do this till that looks good, and then I'll, I'll finish up on the uh, the 150. All right, uh, the frog looks great. I'm real happy with that. I did uh, use my straight edge to you know verify that everything looked nice and flat. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, blow this out, and I don't want to grit anywhere, particularly in the threaded holes. Now I should say, and I should have said this earlier, uh, if you're using compressed air to blow stuff like this out, really make sure when you're blowing that, particularly in threaded holes and things, you, you face it away from yourself because the grit and stuff can come flying out of there and, and really hurt you if you get your eyes. Or so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, put this back together so that it's t tensioned up in the way it would be when it's being used. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
flatten the bottom. Quite often, and we'll see what happens here, I didn't notice it before, but when you're putting that on, now that feels pretty good, that, that tightens up onto the knob. Some, sometimes what'll happen is you'll tighten this and it'll feel tight, but it's, the knob is still a little bit loose. And, and what happens is over time, this brass nut on either the knob or the tote uh, starts to, you know, kind of dig its way down into there and the screw or the bolt ends up bottoming in the bottom of this hole. So you uh, you may have to at some point you know, grind the end off of this. This this one looks pretty good. Sometimes you can tell. Yeah, I think it was on the uh, on the knob. You could tell the threads had been hitting something. They were kind of beat up right at right at the tip there. So anyway, doesn't seem to be an issue with with this particular plane. At least not on the knob. We'll see here on the the tote. No, that that seems okay. Now these these will come off again when I when I refinish them. But I wanted to make sure everything's all together here. So I, I'm not worried about having the blade on there. I just want the the frog on and and you know nice and snug. So I'm back on the 150. Now obviously this is a short plane. If I'd had a longer plane, or if I wasn't being lazy, actually, I'd probably do this on my jointer. But I've got my camera stuff set up here already, and I want to move everything, so I'm just going to do this here. So, that's looking okay so far. I, I need to replace that sandpaper. The main thing I'm looking for is to get it flat around the mouth. I really don't want at the uh, the front edge of the mouth, I don't want a curve there. I want the, the shavings to be held down as long as possible before they hit the blade and then get, uh, you know, pushed up. If that surface is rounded, the shaving can lift up earlier and uh, it's much more likely to, to cause some tear out there. I'm going to continue that. I'll replace this paper. Now I'll I'll work this for a bit, and uh, hopefully it'll clean up fairly quickly. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So this I've probably been at this at most ten minutes. This cleaned up pretty quickly. I'm not not too concerned about up there. Yeah, you know, I've seen it take a lot longer than this. And there, there used to be a machine shop in L.A. that would do this that uh, Alan Boardman had worked with, you know, way back. But that was uh, Rolla grinding, and the, the owner has since retired. And along with it, the uh, along with him, the knowledge of how to do that. So, anyway, um, I worked this a little bit more, and the bottom looks great now. And I'm going to work on the mouth. That surface that I had mentioned before, it looks nice and square, that corner. Uh, but I'm going to file that uh, that area. The so I want to check first to, to make sure what I'm doing here. And it looks, looks pretty good. I, this plane is in remarkable condition compared to others I've seen. It, it's pretty straight and square across there. So I'm going to just clean that up a little bit. So I'm going to clamp this in here. And you know, once again, don't don't overdo it there. And I've got a, a you know, fine or smooth uh, file here. It it has to be smaller to fit in here. This is I think is an eight inch. So I'll use this. I'm going to make sure that's vertical or relatively vertical. And I'm just going to lightly file that. And you know, because I've got a window there, I can see really well. If you don't, you know, maybe put a light here. And I, I want to just get that surface nice and clean. So I'm, I'm riding my left hand along the bench so I'm not rocking too much. So that looks good. Now I'll post a picture of that. 
Um, I think that's going to be fine. In order to help the uh, chips come out of there, I'm going to put a little bevel on there, angle that. I, I'm not going to angle the whole surface. I'm going to, it, it, the surface when I'm done is going to come up and then forward. And that, that just allows a little more room for the chips to come out of there. If you've ever looked at a Lee Nielsen plane, that's, that's how they shape the mouths of their planes. I'm going to clamp that at an angle. Maybe about like that. So the sole is, uh, or the body of the plane is pretty much done. I, you, know, you, you might want to clean up the sides. That's up to you. Uh, on a number four, I'm not too concerned about it. If it was a plane I might use for shooting, I might want to clean up the sides a bit, but I'm just going to leave those. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is uh, clean up the, uh, the paint. It's, I mean, it's clean and, and there's no surface rust now, but to, to keep it from rusting and to just kind of make it look a little nicer, I like to put some shellac on there. So it'll it'll you know bring out the shine and and protect any of the bare metal and it's it's pretty easy to do and for some reason you want to remove it you can just use alcohol. All right, I've got some uh, shellac here, just you know canned, nothing special. Um, so I'm just gonna essentially just paint everything with shellac and you know once once it's all on here you'll see it it kind of darkens things up, just makes it look. Almost like you've repainted it, but it's far, far easier. I just sharpened the blade and I put the uh, chip breaker on it. So it looked it, it looks great. It sharpened up really nicely. I did notice, and I noticed this when I was working on the chip breaker, the, the edge of the chip breaker is a little out of square. So when, when it goes on the blade, it's a little bit... Uh, crooked but that that's not going to affect anything the the handle was broken at one point and and glued back on and I'm guessing what happened I'm not sure if this shows up very well but th this upper portion is slightly back so I'm guessing what happened is the the previous owner or somebody at some point it, it broke which is not uncommon they glued it and put the uh, screw in here to hold it tight. But because the screw's at an angle, it slid this back. So I'm tempted to try and break it apart and, and glue it back together correctly. But I'm a little concerned if I do that, it might you know break in a different spot. So I might try it just gingerly, see what happens. The the knob looks good. It has a, a couple of cracks in it, but I'm not too concerned about that. I don't think it's going to affect the uh, structure of this, and it doesn't. I, well, I guess I can kind of push it back together. So maybe I'll try and get some epoxy in there. But then what I'm going to do once I've got these glued back together or wh whatever. Um, I'll sand them and I'll put some shellac on these too and that should uh, clean them up nicely. Alrighty, I've got all the parts cleaned up, ready to go. You can see the uh, the body of the plane looks nice. You know, like I said, the shellac really helps. It uh, almost makes it look like I've repainted that. Uh, the bare metal, I've uh, rubbed on some camellia oil on most of the parts. Uh, the handle and knob, I put, I sanded it and then put on a coat of shellac and then a, uh, rubbed in some uh, polyurethane. Those look good. So I'll put this back together and uh, we'll see how it works. As I'm putting the plane back together, it reminded me of a couple things. One, uh, I put a touch of grease on the bottom of the lever here, on the lever cap, and that that just helps it kind of snap into place a little better. You just need a very thin film there, but then 
right? It just gives you a nice snap when you put that back in place. The other thing I did, didn't really need it too much, but if, if when you flatten the sole, you get some sharp edges around the uh, corners here, I would, you know, just knock those down a little bit with a file. So I think, I think we're in pretty good shape here. I, uh, I did try this a little bit earlier and it turned out it didn't have quite enough crown on the blade. So this, this seems pretty good now. Yeah, so that's, that's looking great. Very nice. So I think, uh, I think we're good to go.